Okay, so in this video, we're going to follow on from the videos that I've done on adding vectors, and we're going to look at the exact opposite process, the process of resolving vectors or vector resolution. So we're going to start off by recapping a few things we've met before about what vectors are and uh, what the rules are for adding vectors. Um, so I've given you some clues in here as the things that I'm looking for in both of these answers. So I'd like you to pause the video at this point, maybe grab yourself a scrap piece of paper, see if you can answer both of these questions to see where we are before we get started. OK, so I'm going to assume that you have uh, done that. So um, let's define what a vector is. Uh, looking for these key things in here. So it's a quantity that is described using two numbers, the magnitude and direction. Now, strictly speaking, direction doesn't have to be a number. You can have something like north, uh, but m most of the time we will end up using numbers for doing it. OK, so that's what a vector is. Uh, so you can see we've got the uh, these are the three key things I was looking for in there. And then what are the rules for vector addition? So these are the retrieval cues we came up with in the video where we made these rules. Um, so to add vectors together, the first thing we need to do is uh, arrange the vectors tip to tail. And we can do that in any order. It doesn't matter. I tend to put the biggest one first and then the ones following that, especially if I'm doing scale diagrams because it makes things fit a little bit better. And then we uh, need to uh, choose a scale uh, and draw the vectors. So these two basically are going to happen simultaneously because you can't really do one without the other. And then the third thing we then do is draw a resultant from the start to the end there. So that would be our third stage there. And then if we're doing a scale diagram, we can measure the length of that resultant and the angle of that resultant. Or if we're going to do what we're going to be wanting to look at, we can use that diagram and some trigonometry and some Pythagoras to figure out the size of the resultant. OK, so those are things we've met before. So let's get straight into vector resolution. So let's start off by talking about what resolution or resolving actually is. So this is something I think it's worth us adding to our notes. So that's why I put it in purple. So essentially, resolution is the opposite of adding vectors. So it's the process of taking one vector and representing it with two or more vectors. So we're going to do this being doing this in 2D. So we're going to take one vector and turn it into two. If we were doing it in 3D, we would take one vector and turn it into three vectors. But the point is that however many vectors we turn it into, they should produce the same effect as the original vector. OK, so um, we can be a bit more specific than that. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be resolving vectors into uh, two perpendicular vectors. So essentially going to create right angle triangles like you can see here. So you don't have to do that when you're resolving, but it makes things much easier when we're doing mechanics for us to do that. So just to show you what this will look like. So let's say this black one is our original vector going from start to end. We're going to essentially turn that into two perpendicular vectors, like you can see here, which essentially will take us to this in, in this to the same point. So it, that also takes us from start to end as well. So it has the same effect. Um, so. Um, we are going to be doing this using some trigonometry. So that's why we want to turn them into two perpendicular components, because then we form this right angle triangle and we can use all our rules of trigonometry to figure out the length of those vectors. OK, so let's um, talk about why we might want to do this. So the most common reason we resolve vectors is to allow us to add them without having to draw scale diagrams. Um, because scale diagrams are very good at giving us a rough idea at what the uh, resultant of two vectors is. But what if we want to calculate it precisely or do it without drawing diagrams or things like that? Um, so it, it essentially unlocks the ability to use trigonometry and Pythagoras theorem to add vectors together. 
Um, there are a few other contexts in which we use it, like in things like projectile motion and conservation momentum and all that kind of thing, um, but we'll get to those later on. So um, we can do resolving in two ways. We can do it using a scale diagram like we did with vector addition, which I'm going to show you first of all. But the usual way we do it is by using trigonometry, but I'm going to show you both methods here. So what we're going to do is we are going to resolve a 20 Newton force at 45 degrees clockwise from the vertical. And we're going to resolve it into horizontal and vertical components, as we call it. So um, that's actually cool. So this one we would call the horizontal component. And this is the one we would call the vertical component. Okay, so I'm just going to call that this one V, and I'm going to call this one H so I can refer to them. So just like with adding vectors, we cho I've chosen a scale in drawing this diagram. So one centimeter represents two newtons. So that's why I can represent a 20 newton force with a 10 centimeter line. I could have done one centimeter with one newton, but it would have just taken up more space. So I decided not to do that. And you can see we are 45 degrees from clockwise. So if we want to know what our components are, it's simply a case of measuring them off our diagram. So let's do that. So we can see that H is, uh, that's two, four, six. I reckon that's 7.1 centimeters, uh, which means that H is actually, we need to double that. 14.2, uh, I don't know why I thought that was a two, 14.2 newtons. And we can see that if we do the same thing for V, okay, so we've got, let's just shuffle that ruler down a little bit, two, four, six, six, uh, that's what, seven, 0 0.0 centimeters, which means that V is actually 14 newtons in there. And given that oh, the angle in our triangle is 45 degrees there and 45 degrees there and 90 there, and we've got an isosceles triangle, so it shouldn't be too surprising that these two are basically the same number. Um, all things being perfect, they would be exactly the same number, but this is the issue with using scale diagrams. They get us in the right ballpark, but they won't uh, unless we're very, very precise with our drawing, we're not going to get a particularly accurate results here. So that's us using a scale diagram to do it, which is a perfectly valid way of resolving um, a vector into two perpendicular components. I'm now going to show you um, the same thing, but using trigonometry instead. Um, so we're going to be making use of uh, Sokotoa, which is how most people um, learn their sort of three different trigonometry um, definitions, if you like. So the first thing we have to do is actually get the angle in our triangle, and then we've got the opposite side, and we've got the adjacent side. I could call them V and H again if I wanted to. So we know that um, sine of 45, is going to be equal to O divided by 20, because we know the length of this side, or we know it's 20 newtons, because we're told it in here. Um, so then what we can do is we can go, ah, well, that must mean that O is 20 sine 45. And we can calculate what that is. So I'll do that now. 20 times sine 45. And what do you know? It is 14.1 newtons. There. So let's do the same thing. So we know that cosine of 45 is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, hypotenuse being 20. So we see that A is 20 cosine 45, uh, which I don't need to type in the calculator because I know that's going to be 14.1 newtons. Um, Cosine of 45 and sine of 45 are equal to each other. It's the one time where uh, cosine and sine are equal at the same angle. 
And so we've got these two, which you can see match up pretty well with the values we got from our scale diagram. Um, but you can see it just doesn't require you getting your ruler out and drawing lots of very precise diagrams. It's a different way of doing it, but you can see it produces pretty much the same thing. OK, so um, at this point, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to give you a chance to have a crack at this. And we're going to solve the same question using a scale diagram and also using trigonometry, because I think it's important that we can do both. So we are going to resolve a velocity of 20 miles per hour at 50 degrees clockwise from north. And we want it resolved into components in the north direction and east. So that's going to be sort of up and right if you like on our diagram so i'd like you to pause the video grab your scrap piece of paper you will need a ruler and a protractor to be able to do this um, so do grab those have a crack at doing it both using a scale diagram and using trigonometry and then we'll pick it up from there all right so i'm going to assume that you've paused and had a go so let's do that so uh, we need to make this fit. So I'm going to say that one centimeter corresponds to two miles per hour because that should make it fit fairly well. Uh, my ruler has a protractor on it, which is quite nice. So um, I have to put my ruler at an angle of 40 degrees because it measures to the horizontal. So I need to do 10 centimeters. Okay, two, four, six, eight, ten. There we go. So that's our uh 20 miles per hour which is 10 centimeters and then just so we can be clear so 50 degrees clockwise from north if you like means that this angle in here is 50 degrees and we want to resolve into this direction which is the east direction and we want to resolve into the north direction as well. So let's call that N, let's call that E, because that's what both of those are. Okay, so now it's just a case of taking some measurements from our diagram. So let's do our east direction first of all. I'm gonna go up to where the, the north one starts. So two, four, six, seven, what's that's about, I reckon is 7.8 centimeters so we need to double that to get it in miles per hour so the eastern component is it's going to be 15.6 centimeters if my yeah that looks right and we'll do the same thing in the north direction so two four six seven this looks like uh 6.5 to me unless i've messed up 6.5 uh, centimeters, which means the northern component is 13.0. I don't know where it's centimeters here. That is miles per hour, and that's miles per hour as well. And we've managed to find what our two components are, use, making use of just measurements of a scale diagram. So let's also do it for um, using trigonometry. Uh, so let's i'm going to create myself a bit more space before the next section comes in um okay so let's just give ourselves so we've got so we had 20 miles per hour and we had this angle in here there's 50 degrees and let's uh, draw our two components on so we're going to form the same triangle, but this one we only have to do as a rough sketch rather than drawing it too precisely. I just think it's good to have a diagram to look at while we're doing this. And I'm not sure why the ruler's not responding, but let's go with that. So we've got our, that's going to be 40 degrees. That's going to be our opposite side. That's going to be our adjacent side. So we know that uh, sine 40 is going to be equal to O over 20, which means O is 20 sine 40, which is, I'm going to need to calculate that, sine 40, uh, which is 12.9, and it's in miles per hour. And then we can do the same thing for the adjacent side. So cosine of 40 is the adjacent over 20. Um, which, 
means that uh, the adjacent side is 20, cosine 40, which gives us 20 times cosine 40, 15.3 uh, miles per hour. So let's compare them to what we've got before. So what do we get? 15.6 and 15.3, 13 and 12.9. So you can see our scale diagram was pretty good. It came out with something that is pretty close to uh, what we see in reality. Um, but um, the trigonometry I'd expect to give us a more accurate value. Okay, so um, let's finish off as we often do by just taking a look at uh, what my notes from this video would look like. I think there's really only one thing to take away or one new thing that we introduced here we've met all of these using trigonometry and scale diagrams and adding vectors before the one new thing here was what resolving is so it's the process of taking one vector and representing it with two or more vectors that produce the same effect um, and i'm going to add in here the components are usually perpendicular to each other. And the reason why is that then forms a right angle triangle for us to do trigonometry with. That's why we want that. And so you can see I've turned that into this. So um, this is my uh, the thing I'm trying to remember. So turning one vector into multiple vectors. So resolution, we take one vector and we turn it into two or more vectors that have the same effect as the original vector. That's the only new thing that we need to make sure we remember here. OK, so that finishes this video. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to go back to adding vectors, but we're going to use this new tool that we've got so I can show you how to add vectors without drawing scale diagrams. And we can do it using trigonometry and Pythagoras instead.